That's not the potato garden, that's a puddle. Come on, let's go to the back. What's up guys? Today I think is the most beautiful day we've had all spring. It's perfect. And I'm gonna plant potatoes. Here's the peanut gallery. Look at these goof troops. They're not gonna get out because if they see me digging in the soil, they'll wanna help. All right, so here is the in-ground garden. We're topping off all of these beds. Just don't, don't rake it off. We're topping off all of these beds with some super soil, which will just be a couple of inches across the top of all of these. Gonna work. <laughs> over there make sure you keep it on the pile okay see how this one looks this is how it's supposed to look I'm doing work, Mama. you're doing work you're such a good worker <laughs> when you ask Ben what he wants to be when he grows up he says a worker right now is a little bit late to be planting potatoes not too late but ideally I would have put them in a couple of weeks ago however it's been so wet, just constant heavy rain, and that's not good. You don't want to put potatoes in and have them get rained on a lot because they can rot. But I feel pretty good about uh, going ahead and planting them now. They're also up off the ground. They're not going to be sitting in any standing water. It's going to drain off. And we're actually getting these beds ready to plant some other things too. too. And I'm actually about to live on the edge a little bit. Look at my little goaties. They're not super about Gabriel yet. These, I guess, beds, I don't know exactly the rows, I guess you could call them. Uh, they are kind of raised up off the ground. This is going to be no-till. It'll continue to break down and we can continue to add to it over the years. But uh, these are going to be mulched. Now on this end, I'm going to be planting, uh, you know, a couple of rows of potatoes in each one of these wide rows. These are four feet, and these rows are actually like 45 feet long. It, so why are we planting all the potatoes? Because, because we don't have to go to the store, and that's, so yeah. you just come out to, to our farm and we want. Yeah, and we're not going to the store for a while, huh? So you can see here, there's like a little bit of a pathway in between these beds halfway. Here's Ben Turn helping spread some stuff out. He's been running the tractor, getting these piles over here. So we, we established this soil from compost that we made um, a month or so ago. And then here we're laying on top some compost which we purchased uh, just to kind of help enrich this area. And the plan is behind me here, like we split this in half and this half which is about 20 foot rows here. Uh, this is all gonna be potatoes. And then on this half, which is possibly just a little bit longer, this is probably about 25 or 30 feet. This is gonna be, um, I, I'm gonna actually put this row cover down. I got this stuff from Bootstrap Farmer. And this is just like a water permeable uh, row fabric, ground cover fabric. And I'm actually gonna cover this side with these. Obviously, you can't do that with potatoes. Down here on the end, where I am using that uh, ground cover, that fabric ground cover, uh, you just cut holes in it and plant into it and it keeps the weeds down. And back here is where I'm gonna put all my okra and winter squash and summer squash. And I'm thinking with the summer squash back here, I'll actually be able to use some sort of tool cover and hopefully keep the bugs off and actually get a harvest. So this stuff, um, from the bootstrap farmer. It's four feet wide and 250 feet long. So obviously uh, I'm not about to use all of it right here. But the idea is that this is gonna keep us from fighting weeds. Uh, here's the thing that I'm gonna do to break the rules. So our estimated last frost date is currently like April 6th to 10th somewhere in there is where my area is estimated out i've even seen some things that say april 14th and right now it is really warm we don't have a low on the 10 day forecast it's lower than like 45 so it's gonna stay pretty warm and we just put out all this compost which is really warm i'm gonna be covering it which is gonna keep it warm and i think i'm going to break the rules i'm gonna sew warm weather stuff back here in this garden. My okra 
um, and my squash and go ahead and get those started. A lot of summer squash varieties, you can harvest at 40 to 45 days. Like we could be putting food on our table in 45 days if we start growing it now. I am taking a risk if it does look like it's gonna freeze again. One time, uh, dipping down to 32 degrees is going to kill those one time and just one night that's that cold and they'll be dead. But it might not happen. And so what I'm risking here is a little bit of time and a handful of seeds. And currently I have extra of both of those. Well, we made a little boo-boo. We made our beds a little too high and wide. So we're actually gonna come in and scoop out some of this soil and kind of thin it out so we can flatten these down just a little bit and get a good uh, get a good purchase. We gotta, we gotta use pins, metal pins, to stick this down into the ground, like, you know, fabric nails or whatever, and keep that down. So this is gonna have to come down just a little bit. And I think what we're gonna do to kind of offset this, uh, because we already moved all the soil back here, I just kind of eyeballed it and I didn't think about the height. Um, I, I knew it would be close, but I knew we might have to do this. But we'll probably just move that soil down to the end and just make these rows a little bit longer since it's already down here. These, however, are gonna stay built up this high. And what I'm actually doing, and they, after it rains some, it's gonna come back down a little bit. But I'm actually um, gonna just plant the potatoes down in here, not super deep. I'll probably plant them just about this deep. And then we're gonna stack hay up on this. We're gonna do a really heavy hay mulch. And this is sort of like modified from the Ruth Stout method, which Ruth Stout actually just put the potatoes on top of the ground and just piled the hay up on top of them. And we're actually planting them into the ground here, but this is no dig. And I am gonna pile them up on top uh, because as this bed gets established, that's gonna help with erosion. Now, hopefully the way that we have built these and piled them up, in the way that there's room for the water to run, um, hopefully there's not gonna be a ton of erosion. The beds that we had already put out here, they didn't, they're not washing away. And they've been out here for a month, all the soil that's been out here. And we piled it up higher, but I think it's gonna require ground cover and mulch to really keep it in place as much as I wanna keep it in place. This is completely not realistic football. This is no, my coaches would be very disappointed. <laughs> Are you on both teams, Jackson? Yeah. Hey, Basil. Come on, go, go. That's not quite what I My kids have been cooped up in the rain, so they are clearly enjoying the outside. We just took a lunch break. They're playing some flag football in the front yard, and I'm gonna go back and put my potatoes in the soil. I'm gonna try to let Bear be out with me and hopefully he doesn't get into too much stuff. You wanna check on the chickens? Oh, hey ladies. Oh no, I've made a bad choice. I'm wearing sandals. Hey, two eggs. We're moving on up. Two today. Well done, girls. Yay, good job. Gotta do kung fu to keep them from biting my toes while I'm out here in sandals. My attempt since the coronavirus outbreak um, has been to share with you guys our process and uh, you know somewhat in our process of decision making kind of what we're doing the same and what we're doing different and also to put out a lot of content that is helpful to people who are really new because we're getting a lot of messages from people who are like just really realizing that they want to grow food um, given just the current climate of things. And I mean, having food security and growing food, one, if you're stuck at home a lot, grow a garden because I mean, what else are you gonna do whenever you're not leaving your house? Um, it's a great thing to do for a lot of people. Now is the time of year to do it. The other thing is that, you know, growing food really does give you a peace of mind. It's a, it's a great, um, form of self-care to take the time to grow 
to grow a garden. I left my dog in the chicken yard. That was a bad idea. Hey, homie. Come here, bear. You little stinker. Don't give me kisses with that mouth. You little poop eater. I am not sharing any of the stuff that I'm sharing right now to incite fear or try to add to any panic that anybody may be having about the possibility of food shortages or anything like that. I am not trying to get political up in here at all. However, uh, the real truth is like, I'm a, you know, we're a channel that teaches people how to grow food. We encourage people in family life and home life and their personal uh, faith and growing their own food and going back to the garden and localizing their food sources. And so really, to me, like, we've been talking about those things for two years. Stopping talking about them right now wouldn't make no sense. I mean, it's, it's really time, I feel a sense of responsibility to share what I have. Um, and if that's equipping people to do something that they've never done before, I totally wanna do that. So, um, kind of sharing some different things. We are actually, we changed a couple of plans, not a lot. We had actually already planned on putting up this high tunnel and putting in all these in-ground gardens uh, before all this stuff happened. Like this was already in our plan. We were already tripling our growing space this year. And now I feel like, okay, now I know why. Um, because it didn't really make a lot of sense. We didn't even know what we were gonna do with extra food because we really don't have time to market. But, uh, but yeah, now I understand why. And I'm really glad that we're gonna be able to help other people with the resources that we have. That said, we've had to kind of adjust a little bit and this is one of the things that we decided to do differently. We had shared a few uh, weeks ago that we were thinking about renting a chipper and trying to chip up all these branches to use as wood chips and as you can see right now that is not happening the reason why we decided to go ahead and burn this which we can use the ash um, in the compost you wouldn't want to put this much ash on your garden but we can set it to the side and use it as needed so it's not like a total bust and we did take out a lot of logs some of them are going to be milled uh, some of them we're going to have just to use for like posts and stuff what we could salvage we did but a lot of these branches they would have made great wood chips and we might could have gotten a chipper right now but again we are choosing to stay at home and um go out as little as possible which for us is, we actually can do that we live a pretty uh introverted life we're pretty self-sustained so like we really don't have to go out a lot right now our goal is to get that greenhouse that high tunnel up as soon as possible so we can get growing as soon as possible so this was the fastest way with the least interaction and we'll just get wood chips at a later date All right, I'm gonna show y'all what I'm doing and then I'm just gonna do it fast. So I just took my rake and made little trenches in my beds here. And I've got my seed potatoes in this little thing. My seed potatoes are from Haas as well. As you can see, they're quite sprouted. Um, and so basically I'm gonna tuck them down in here and it's okay for some of that to stick out, but we're looking at uh, putting those couple inches down under the soil and I'm not gonna individually cover them up I'm just gonna lay them all out and then cover them up and after we get done putting all these potatoes in and I've got multiple kinds from hostels um, these are the blue Adirondack and some of these are cut the bigger ones are cut the smaller ones I didn't bother cutting um, but like some of the bigger ones are, are cut and healed uh, but I'm putting these down these mounds and I'm gonna plant all three of these with the potatoes I have. I also have some potatoes, I just had some organic potatoes from the store that uh, were on the bottom of my produce shelf and I missed them and they all started to sprout and grow eyes. So I'm gonna plant those too um, because I believe I'm gonna have the space for all of them. And then we'll mulch them really heavy with straw after we're done. So where some of these little things stick up, uh, those will be primarily covered with straw. I'm planting them about 12 and 14 inches apart uh, down the trench. 
probably give them a little more space if I'm using a bigger piece that's got multiple eyes on it. Are you bored of me, Bear? <laughs> oh goodness, there's a lot of potatoes to plant. I think that deserves some baby goat time. Hey little ones, hi. Hey mommies. <laughs> hey lovely, what's up Regina girl, what's up? Oh, time to stop for a snack, huh? A goat playground or teeter-totter or something is definitely on the to-do list after all of the, you know, like really uh, time-sensitive food production things. Those are the priority. <laughs> He's such a spaz. Now, I've shared often that I am like a total introvert, and I really am. But I'm having to come to terms that maybe I liked getting out and about a little more than I realized in the, in the wake of not being able to do it, like staying home. And I mean, we have a ton to do. We have a lot of people here, so it's not like I'm really experiencing like the real worst of that. Uh, by any means and I'm thankful for the circumstances that we have but I'm definitely realizing the fact that maybe I like social interaction just a tiny bit more uh, than I had previously thought. <laughs> Look at these clowns. It's always you Miriam. You're always the first to come say hello. So I've been keeping an eye on Mabel because she is my my goat that I and suspecting is pregnant. I really feel like she may be getting a little bit of an udder. What do you guys think? You wanna diagnose her backside? Nestle said, no, don't exploit her in that way. She is one of my wildlings. She was damn raised, I don't know. I think she's pregnant. I, I've been wrong before, uh, but she was definitely exposed to a buck and she's a first timer. So for her udder to be forming at all, usually would mean something. And then Winona here, She's bred, we know, because she had a blood test right before we got her, and she's starting to show. Um, her belly's starting to really get bigger, and her udder's starting to fill out, so she's still got a few months, though. Bye, girls. Bye. Country kid. Are you a farm kid, Benjamin? Yeah. On my current to-do list, and what I've been working on a lot, this last week or so has been to deep clean my house. Um, not so much for biosecurity, but because it just really needs it. I don't know if you have ever tried to clean a house while you have two large dogs that live inside and five boys who are home all the time and you live on a farm and it won't stop raining. So that's been fun, but I'm, I'm hoping that I can just knock it out a little bit at a time. Obviously, I'm not making video of that. I know some people do, but I have to really focus. I have a hard time staying focused while I'm cleaning. But today was just too beautiful. Today was too beautiful to be inside cleaning. So here I am, outside, making the most of it. Hey, oh, be careful. Look, you got it. Let's turn it down a little bit. That's a little too high. Yeah, turn it down here. Right now, that's a little better. Hey, it's supposed to be soft. They're babies. Look, now they're laid over. They're like, I'm so sad. Don't do that again. They'll stand back up. Don't worry. Oh, you seem very concerned. I have a bunch of flowers and herbs over here that really need to be planted out. I decided not to up pot them since we're getting so close to planting most of these things out. Yes, please, you can water all of them. But check out those beautiful variegated nasturtiums. These really do need to get transplanted. The roots are looking kind of on the sad side. They really do need to be transplanted. Uh, some of these things, like the nasturtiums that are really uh, frost tender, I may have to 
go ahead and uh, pot them because I'd be taking a risk with them if I moved them out. Things like the sweet alyssum, those are frost hardy. The dill should be fine. You know, several of these things I could go ahead and plant outside. You planting any water in them? Now, typically at bottom water, but sometimes when the kids help, we make an exception. They'll be fine. It smells of Ben's tomato plants. What do you want? Tomatoes all in my garden. You want your whole garden to be tomatoes? Yeah. And you're gonna make a sign that says what? Ben's tomato plants. Oh, I see. Well, that sounds like a pretty good plan. So, but won't you want to grow some cucumbers? Ben's cucumber garden. So you're not going to share your garden with your brothers? I am going to share it, but I'm going to show them all the types I have. Oh, that's how you're going to share it? By showing them what you have? Yeah. I can't say it's a bad plan. Don't y'all think that this garden is coming along beautifully? What do you think, Benjamin? Do you like this garden? Yeah, I don't. I want. I don't like it with that. With it, it's not a forest. You don't like it that it's not a forest. I know. You, we got to go with the pro process, man. The best things you are worth do, the wait. You know what I'll do? What? I don't want it. I just make it rain a whole a really hard and, and like really, really hard and it'll just water all of them till it goes to three. Yeah. I think, when is the day to plant tomatoes? Yeah. Um, couple weeks. We're not gonna take a risk with those. We're gonna wait till after the frost risk has passed. Mulching these beds with straw is very high on my priority list, as well as amending with the super soil now that we have it. We will be really, really busy with the farm for the next month or so. It kind of settles down once everything is in. It's still busy. You still have to maintain everything and, you know, be outside in the garden every day. But at that point, it's not, um, it's not such hard work and it's not so demanding. Like to me, pruning a bunch of plants is a lot easier than planting a bunch of plants. So. Uh, it's definitely the high season right now for getting stuff done. But isn't it rewarding? It's so rewarding. Right there? Right. I hope this blog isn't terribly scattered. I sometimes feel like they are whenever it spreads off the course of a day. Uh, whenever I'm doing a lot of tasks because my mind is going from task to task to task and then engaging with the camera. But it's really important to me right now to produce regular content while I know that we're home every day and many of you are home daily. And to me, it just feels, um, if I feel so thankful to have this refuge, um, to be busy in this garden, to be uh, so distracted, honestly, from the current goings on by what I have right in front of me. I'm happy, I'm definitely happy to be able to just share our busy season with you and hopefully um, allow you a little bit of refuge as well. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I bless you, until next time.